This is Mrs. Appia with Lesson 15 from Module 3, Graphing Solutions to Inequalities. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Students graph solutions to inequalities, taking care to interpret the solution in the context of the problem. The essential questions for this lesson. How do I determine the direction of a ray? And how do I determine if the endpoint is open or solid? We're going to skip exercise one and turn to the summary to begin. In the summary, I want to go over how to solve and graph inequalities. First, solve using the properties of inequalities to get zeros and ones. Second, draw a number line. Write the solution and two numbers on each side of the solution. Number three, mark the solution with a circle. Step four, draw a ray in the same direction as the solution. Number five, if the inequality includes equal to, then fill in the circle. Also, we'll do a concept summary. A concept summary summarizes which direction the rays will go to and if the circles will be filled in or not on the graph. If the symbol is less than or fewer than, then your line will point to your right and your circle will be open, indicating that the number that it is on is not a solution. If it is greater than, it will be an open circle, indicating that that number is not part of the solution. The ray will point to all of the numbers that are greater than that number, because the solution, all of the numbers are greater than but not equal to that number. If the solution is less than or equal to, you will have a solid circle, indicating that the solution is that number as well as all of the numbers less than that number. If the solution is greater than or equal to, you will have a circle, it will be filled in, indicating that that number and all of the numbers greater than it are a solution. If the symbol is less than, the clue words might be is less than or is fewer than. If it is greater than, it means is more than or exceeds. If the symbol is less than or equal, it could mean that it is less than or equal to, is no more than or is at most. And finally, greater than and equal to, is no less than or is at least, but it could be more. So let's go back to the examples now to solve the problems. We're on page 114. A local car dealership is trying to sell all of the cars that are on the lot. Currently, there are 525 cars on the lot. The general manager estimates that they will consistently sell 50 cars per week, so that will reduce their inventory. Estimate how many weeks it will take for the number of cars on the lot to be less than 75. Write an inequality that can be used to find the number of full weeks, W, that it will take for the number of cars to be less than 75. Since W is the number of full or complete weeks, W equal 1 at the end of week 1. Solve and graph the inequality. We're starting off with 525 cars in the inventory, and we're going to subtract that by $50 per week, and we write that as 50W. And we want to know how many weeks till it's less than 75 left. The first thing I want to do to solve this inequality is to rewrite the subtraction as adding the opposite. So that's going to be 525. Instead of subtracting 50W, I'm going to add a negative 50W is less than 75. Now, you think, what should I do first to solve this equation? We have a positive 525. So to undo that, I'm going to need to subtract 525. Some students mistakenly do this step first. They will subtract the negative 50W. But that is just moving your variable then over to the other side. And you want to take care of the constants before you take care of the coefficient with the variable. So we subtract 525 from both sides of the inequality. This gives us a zero pair on the left and negative 50W on the right. 
the inequality is preserved. When you add or subtract, the inequality does not change. So 75 minus 525 is equal to negative 450. Next, negative 50w means to multiply. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. You can either divide by negative 50 or you can multiply by the reciprocal, which is negative 1 over 50. So I'm going to divide by negative 50. When you divide with a negative number, your inequality symbol is reversed. So I'm going to go ahead and change that from less than to greater than. A number divided by itself is 1. 1 times w is w. And negative 450 divided by negative 50 is 9. So we have solved the inequality, and we find that the number of weeks must be greater than 9. To graph the inequality, draw your number line, write the solution on the number line, and write two numbers on each side of the solution. Draw the circle at the solution. Determine whether it should be filled in or left open. Greater than 9 means that it cannot be 9, but any number greater than 9, so we'll leave it open. Then, it includes all of the numbers that are greater than 9, and so the ray goes to the right, and it goes in the same direction as the inequality is pointing. So our solution, all numbers greater than 9. Then we can verify that our solution is correct by going back to the original inequality, which was 525 minus 50w is less than 75. So we're going to substitute 9 for w to verify that our solution is correct. Minus 50 times 9 is less than 75. So 525 minus 450 less than 75. 525, that's 75. 75 is less than 75. And this is false. So what that means is that 9 is not a solution, but all numbers greater than 9 are the solution. So let's verify that. We've got 525 minus 50w less than 75. We'll substitute 10 weeks because, remember, it said how many full weeks. So let's put 10 for the number of weeks, 525 minus 500 less than 75. So we do this math, that gives us 25 is less than 75, and that is true. So we have just verified that 10 is a solution. Now again, the reason that we put the open circle on 9 is because 9, it, the number must be greater than 9, but not including 9. And so we put it on 9, indicating that it could be here. The answer to this question is full weeks. So the answer had to be either 10 or 11 or 12. Exercise 2. The cost of renting a car is $25 per day, plus a one-time fee of $75.50 for insurance. So that's going to be a constant, and 25 per day we'll write as 25, and let's use D for day. The cost is to be no more than $525, so that means it could equal $525 or it could be less than $525. So no more than means greater than or equal to. It means less than or equal to. There we go. Let's go through that again. No more than 525 means it could be 525 or it could be less than that. So an inequality to model the situation. We've got 7550 for insurance plus $25 per day has to be less than or equal to $525. Pause and complete the problem. Solve it, graph it, and interpret your solution. I've drawn the number line, and then I put the circle where the solution is. The solution is 17.98, which is right next to 18. And then it is pointing to all of the numbers that are less than or equal to that number. 
Since it is less than or equal to, we fill that in. Finally, interpret the solution in the context of this problem. So in the context of this problem, you are renting the car per day. So the number of days is a whole number. So the solution would be 17 days or fewer to stay within the amount of $525. The number of days is an integer, and the 18th day would put the cost over $525. Since the fee is charged per day, the solution day includes whole numbers. For each problem, write, solve, and graph the inequality, and interpret the solution within the context of the problem. Mrs. Smith decides to buy three sweaters and a pair of jeans. She has $120 in her wallet. The price of the jeans is $35. What is the highest possible price of a sweater if each sweater is the same price? Pause the video, write an inequality that could be used to solve this problem. The inequality is three times the cost of a sweater plus $35 for the jeans must be less than or equal to $120. Pause the video and solve the inequality. The solution is the cost of a sweater must be less than or equal to $28.33. When you multiply 85 times one-third, you get 28.33 repeating. Remember to round to the nearest penny to solve the problem. Next, go ahead and graph that inequality and then interpret the solution in the context of the problem. So the circle is on $28.33. It's filled in because it can include that amount of money or less than that amount of money. So the highest price she can pay is $28.33 per sweater. The members of the select chorus agree to buy at least 250 tickets for an outside concert. They buy 80 less lawn tickets than balcony tickets. What is the least number of balcony tickets bought? Pause the video and write an inequality that could be used to solve this problem. We're keeping track of lawn tickets and balcony tickets, and we only know a little bit about the lawn tickets. So the complete unknown is the balcony tickets. And the balcony tickets we'll call B, and then we'll write the lawn tickets in terms of the balcony. So the lawn tickets, you're buying 80 less than the balcony. And we know that we need to buy at least 250. So we have the balcony tickets plus the lawn tickets. And that needs to be at least 250. So it could be 250 or it could be more than 250. So it's greater than or equal to 250. So our balcony tickets are called B. Our lawn tickets are called B minus 80. And that has to be greater than or equal to $250. Pause the video again and try to solve the equation or the inequality if you haven't gotten that far yourself. So the inequality is 2B minus 80 is greater than or equal to 250. I added 80 to both sides of the inequality, then multiply by 1 half to isolate the variable. So the number of balcony tickets is greater than or equal to 165. Then I wrote 165 on the number line. I wrote two numbers on each side of it. I drew a circle for the, in, the solution. And since it is greater than or equal to, it is filled in. It's pointing the same way as the inequality to the right. I verified that my solution of 250, or rather 165, is correct by substituting it for the variable b, doing the math, and since this inequality is true, my answer is correct. Interpreting the solution, the least number of balcony tickets is 165. Finally, Samuel needs $29 to download some songs and movies on his iPad. iPod. His mother agrees to pay him $6 an hour or $6 per hour for raking leaves, in addition to his $5 weekly allowance. 
What is the minimum number of hours Samuel must work in one week in order to have enough money to purchase the songs and movies? And he needs $29. If he gets more than $29, that will be okay. So it has to be greater than or equal to $29. He has a fixed weekly allowance of $5. In addition to that, he earns $6 per hour. So $6 per hour plus the weekly allowance has to be greater than or equal to $29. Pause the video, solve the inequality, graph the solution, and interpret the answer. When you're ready, resume the video to check your work. The solution, the number of hours he must work must be four or more, and When you uh, color in the inequality, you put the circle on four for the four hours, and the answer is all numbers greater than four. So the minimum number of hours is four. He could work longer and have extra money. We've already gone through your summary. We've learned in this video how to solve and graph inequalities, and you've got a concept summary of clue words for less than or greater than, and then which way the arrow would point on the number line.